All right, guys, uh, back on the peak pump 24 valve compound turbo dual plenum. This episode, we're going to be bending the injection lines. We went with Hazley straight lines um, because I started bending, rebending the old ones, realized that's garbage, and I can't buy a preset one because we got the dual plenum, so we got to bend them around that as well. We got it all finished. Looks more and more like an engine. Can't wait to put this in the truck. We're pretty well done. A couple few odds and ends that are missing yet, but uh, you can see it at Motorama. We'll be there April 29th to May 2nd. And I'm bouncing around all the projects because um, everything's got to be there. That truck's got to be there. That truck's got to be there. This has to be there. Enough yapping. Let's get into it because I got to keep working. Here we go. So Silverado was like, why does the Ford get a bus engine? I want a bus engine. We're gonna put a bus engine in Silverado. I bought this truck in 07 and it's done a lot for me and I think it deserves a second chance. So we got a nice self-bend clutch, an absolute must. We're gonna bend lines around a dual plenum intake if I can make that work. Oh, you think you're so close. Get this peak pump, 24 valve, ready to go. Let's do it. Okay, so on a conventional mechanical injection system that has an individual plunger for each injector, the injection lines need to be the same physical length because even though we can't see it, what's happening is when we put 3000 PSI through these lines, they actually expand, metal expands and shrinks again. So as it expands, they all need to expand the same amount. If one line was longer than another, it would delay the timing because it would take that much longer to expand that pipe and then fire the injector. When you have a common rail, anything after like the early 2000s, then you'll see the lines being different lengths and that's because those lines are always under pressure and everything is under pressure up until the injector and they're using an electronic injector to open and fire the injection cycle at a designated time through the crank sensor or the cam sensor. We don't have that, we have a physical camshaft driving our injection pump, so every one of the lines is super critical to be the exact same length. In an ideal world, we'd also have the same amount of bends in each one, but we're not living in a fantasy world. All right, um, now, before we start bending, there's a little piece on the end there, and that slides. And just like a brake fitting, if you bend it at all and you do not have that at the end, you will not get that thing around a corner. You will, however, get that thing around a corner once it's off of that nut, that little, that little piece. All right, and see that? So do not forget that piece. I've done three lines, I haven't forgot yet, but I've got three to go. What I found works best is I started here, I had to heat this one up just a little bit to get it to bend where it didn't want to bend around my intake. But then these ones I just started here and then on every bend where I want it, I just put a little red mark with a, with a marker. And that way when I fold it around my tube bender, I don't have to guess which angle it is. Um, I just stick it in here and then fold around making sure that I can see that red mark. Then I don't bend it all the way. Um, if this is a 90, only bend it like on a 45, then see if the bend is too far on the inside or on the outside, and then you can adjust and, and continue bending on one side of the bend or the other to get the bend nice. Um, then it is just a pain in the butt back and forth. It helps that I've got one pump here, my crappy pump here, my good pump on the bench there, because I can put them side by side and go. And then I have to make sure that I'm bending them around here too. This is a bit tight. Um, but an extra bend, like, like this extra bend going one way, even though I don't have to, I was using this as a, a little bit of a pry bar. If you have an extra bend in there, then you can bend that corner more or less to give you more or less one way or the other to make it line up here. And then this bend is really nice. You, you want them all parallel, so these five will all be parallel. This one will be in just a bit more, but you can twist this one way or the other to give you an extra little bit. 
trick is to get it looking as factory as possible and get them all lined up as close as possible. Um, see this one goes down a hair and it's low a bit here so I might be able to just curl this up a little bit and then this gap here will be more even on, on one side than the other. So um, it is really just painstakingly slow. Three lines, three hours. Um, <laughs> I'm getting quicker. So uh, we'll do the other ones and then uh, we'll keep time lapsing that and then I'll have some final thoughts. There is no easy way to do this and it is just trial and error. I did start with the one at the farthest back and I would have liked to have it completely parallel to the block but the line just wasn't long enough. These were 32s. I could have got 34s um, and that would have worked for this line but then you start getting into issues here because I got to bend it around this intake and then I'll probably stack them on top of here and then do three rows of, of three if that makes sense because this line basically has to go around this intake, go this way, then come back and then come up and go to, to that one. Anyway, we'll keep going. Got the time lapse going. It can't hear me swear. Uh, we'll play some nice music over that and then uh, we'll keep carrying on. Here we go. Okay, so I'll try and explain my math. Um, hopefully, you can follow along. I'm going to start my bend right here. So I made a mark right here and measure from here to where I need to go to this injector line. So that is 11 inches from here to here. I've measured how long it is to get from the tip of the injection pump down to here and I've already taken that off of the end of my pipe and I did that with some wire. So from here to here is 11 inches. So I've taken that off. So from here to here, I made another mark at 11 inches. Now I'm left with five and a quarter. I've measured how much um, this bend is around my uh, tube bender, and that's two and a half inches. Now I can squeeze that a little bit tighter. So you take two and a half inches off of that, that's gonna be my radius. And what I'm left with is just about an inch. Um, so I've made a mark on the bottom. Um, it's basically going to be an inch here and an inch here and when I curl that around this mark should be pretty close to that mark and that'll give me my 11 inches plus my radius for the last bend. Um, think about it, do it, um, yours is going to be different but if you think about it in sections um, you're going to be close. You can straighten the pipe if you mess up, stick it in the vise and just bend it outside the vise. I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, but we'll bend this down. I'm gonna go down, come back up, go over top. So I'm gonna have two rows of three, um, just neater that way. And then everything's still gonna line up nicely straight down my engine. So here we go. It looks I'm really happy with that. Um, we can pull it, uh, straighten it out a little bit um, with these clamps. I can put a couple more here yet. The only thing I'm not happy about is this one right here. It's not touching, but it's too close. Um, and I don't like this wonky bend here. I should have stopped. I should have stopped right here because I was getting frustrated. My hands were starting to hurt from pushing and pulling on these lines. They do not bend very nice. Um, but for the most part, that actually looks really good. I'm, I'm happy with that. Everything's kind of lined up nice. A little bit off, but uh, I, I've seen worse. <laughs> so, um, yeah, a couple more. Actually, you know what, if I put a clamp on there, hold on, hold on, if I put a clamp on there, it might be a little bit ugly, but at least I won't spend any more time on it. Hold on one sec. Okay, so, and if things don't work out, just walk away. Um, best thing 
to do was take a break uh, and I did once yesterday and as soon as I came back that one line went and then uh, this one I want to redo. I'm just not happy with that. So I'll show you guys how to straighten them out a bit and take a second go at it. Okay, so to straighten it, stick the straight part in the vise and then have the corner sticking out just a little bit. So when you bend it, when you pull on it, it's gonna straighten just a little bit. And then as you straighten it, put it in the vise a little farther and farther every time until, it, until you got it nice and straight again. Now, I did attempt to try and do this with uh, used lines and straighten them and gave up on that pretty quick because once they're, once they're bent that severely into their shape, it's almost impossible to make them look good. So you can if you want, um, but all our lines in Canada were rusty in that too, so it just didn't, um, it just didn't make sense. Keep tweaking it a little bit. You see a little curve there, a little curve there. So just keep working it until you're happy with it. I'm glad I started at the back to practice and those lines were the straightest um, lengthwise because they're long. I didn't have to make the fold. The issue is that if you get this bend wrong, then what you're left with is a different height and, and all your plungers are gonna be different heights. That kind of bothers me. So trying hard to get that bend right, but you gotta find a way to make up for it if you're wrong with the bends right here. That's where I messed up. I should have stopped before I did this last line. <laughs> That's not bad. A little bit more. I got some, uh, let me sand that down. Yesterday, one little bend here, and then put the line back, put yeah. it aside, mark it, measure it. Hope you come out. When you get too many bends in there, it becomes tricky because yeah. your hose hits your vice. so close. I don't feel bad if it's a, <laughs> this is a very frustrating job, <laughs> especially because the other ones look so nice. So I can hold it rigid now. I like my clearances here. Now I just got to bend this over and then up a little bit and open that one up and then I'm good. I keep thinking I'm bleeding over all these lines, but it's just the, the red marker I was using. <laughs> That well, keeps it exciting. <laughs> uh, it's worse than people watching you try to hit a nail at a stag and dough. 
<laughs> this was just so, so frustrating, this, this job. And then have somebody with a camera in your face. <laughs> Lots of room for my banjo fitting right there. If I do any more, I'm just gonna mark it up even more. So I either buy another line or I'm okay with that. We'll have to see. Anyway, now I'm gonna take it all apart again, paint it, and then uh, we'll call that good. It's too bad because just that one, it, you just need to. So, I know lots of comments. Why did you paint it white? Why am I? Why did I steal my kid's paintbrush? And why am I touching up paint? Well, Aaron told me it has to look good for video, and I realized that's what this is about. Um, as soon as I drive it, it's gonna get dirty. It's gonna get covered. It is what it is. But art is supposed to be enjoyed, not just owned. So we will be ripping this down the road. We'll be having some fun with it. It will get dirty, and as soon as I crack one of these injector lines, the paint's gonna come off. I'm okay with that, but it uh, it does pay off in the end. And as far as I know, I think I'm the only one that has a dual plenum on a 24 valve Cummins. And uh, you can you can do the same. You need to get out there, work on it, build something that you can't buy, and drive the snot out of it. But if you're not filthy, you're not rich. So get out there and work on it. Uh, lots of good stuff coming up. Back on the 350 next video. Cab over on the other channel. If it's not up already, it will be shortly. It's in paint and back on the frame. And uh, we're moving right along. Here we go.